Hello, everyone. I'm Colin Tess of Wrestling.com, joined by Jordan Clearwater, the NWA World Television Champion. Jordan, how are you doing today? Colin, I am doing fantastic today. How are you? Doing well. Appreciate you taking the time. We're here right ahead of, I guess, one week to the day ahead of NWA Power, the first ever live power. They're definitely a big deal for the NWA. So let's just start right there. But you're the television champion. Obviously, that's a pretty big deal. It's a live TV show. Right, right. I'm I'm pretty stoked that I get to be the first uh, NWA World Television Champion that's on a live television show for the NWA. You know, I was having this conversation with uh, Steve Fall, and we were talking about how live television makes such a big difference, especially when you know we're used to filming power six or, or or six to eight weeks at a time, you know, a season at a time. But now you guys get to experience what it's like in real time. And hopefully that drives some more attention and audience to the pay-per-views, you know, that are gated behind maybe like a paywall and fight TV. Do you have experience elsewhere, like performing live on TV or is, well, is this going to be something new for you? Like where do you kind of fall in that spectrum? Obviously every wrestler has a different experience with that. So just curious to hear your background in, in that regard. Sure. I've done a taped program before for New Japan Strong. Uh, they haven't done more of like a live event in the sense that we did do a pay-per-view out of Austin, Texas live. Um, so that's kind of my experience there. But I was the um, uh, United Wrestling Network World Heavyweight Champion for the last seven or eight months. And there we did a lot of tapings, but also some live pay-per-views. Um, one where I defended against Willie Mack on our primetime live show out of the Commerce Casino. So I do have some experience with live television. You know, this will be the first actual television show for NWA that I've done live, outside of, of course, the pay-per-views. What would you say are some of the differences between uh, performing live at a, at a pay-per-view kind of event versus a, a more a tape show, like, like just kind of compare and contrast the two uh, environments? Sure. I got to go back to like Botchamania. It's live, pal. <laughs> you know, I think that's such a great saying because it's so true. Uh, it's it's a raw and realistic emotion that you get uh, through the television. You know, in COVID, we kind of had a, a we, we didn't really have a whole lot of Botchamanias because things could be retaped over and over and over again. Right. And we don't really do that on the loops. Uh, but, you know, I think one of the unique things that comes out of, of live television is having real time moments, you know, not even glossing over some of the mistakes that might happen or, you know, some of the mistakes that could be perceived as gifts. You know, Chris Masters taught me that uh, more of some in-ring psychology a while ago that not every mistake, not every botch is really just a botch. It's a, it's a gift if you if you use it right. And so so getting to see that and getting to see the audience react in real time, it's 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 hard not to love live television. You know, I think of the Royal Rumble coming up. It's perhaps one of the most uh, interactive live television shows or pay-per-views that we have, right? I mean, everybody's betting, everybody's talking, you know, who's coming in at 30, who's winning. And so I hope to have some of that, uh, some of that aura next week. You bring it up, so just to see if you have any fun stories. Do you have any kind of quote unquote botches or, or gifts that kind of come to mind for you that you've kind of that you look back fondly on you like the kind of thing you laugh now but maybe at the time maybe not so much do you have any kind of experience like that having you said Chris Masters kind of help you maybe see a little bit of perspective with that but anything kind of, kind of come to mind Sure. I, I've had my fair share of botches. Uh, you know, it's just little things that didn't go right. Like maybe I went for something and I screwed it up. But I have a pretty uh, kind of a funny untold story from the independent scene uh, years ago. So I was wrestling uh, in Paris, Kentucky uh, for legendary Larry D. You might know him. He was on Impact and now he's, you know, on NWA. But uh, so uh, Larry had booked me in a match against uh, Adam Swayze, a um, uh, a fellow wrestler out of the Northern Wrestling Federation, again, independent wrestling. But Adam uh, went to pull me into the buckle. And this was before I realized, you know, hey, maybe you should be wearing two pairs of trunks instead of one. Grabs the drawstring, yanks it, breaks, everything flops out. You know, sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, the match is on YouTube. But no, I don't think you can see anything. Oh, but no. yeah, that that taught me a great lesson, Colin. I, uh, I've, uh, I've never made that mistake twice. <laughs> yeah, it only takes one time for that to happen. Seems like it. Wow. That's, that's a good <laughs> right. one. But uh, let's, let's uh, rewind a little bit here, go a little more general. So I was doing my research and it looks like you first popped up in the end of your way back in 2020, if that sounds right. It looks like a match with Nick Aldis. And then that's, even... yes, that's, 
And yeah, that's right. That was um, like kind of uh, not to cut you off, but that was Nick Aldis. That was kind of like the beginning of the reboot. I think they called that um, like Shockwave. Is, that's is what that yeah. was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so and you've been you've been featuring them ever since. So just uh, looking back, kind of on that journey you've been on ever since. Uh, what is your what has that journey been like? Kind of go, going up to this point. Now you're the NWA World Television Champion, but uh, again, it's, it's been you've been with the company for quite a while now. So just you know, walking back to that journey to where you are now, what's what's that been like? Oh man, it's uh, it's like living a dream. You know, I have always loved and appreciated wrestling, but the NWA holds a special place in all of our hearts as fans. You know, to respect the lineage and the history of where everything came from. So, uh, you know, I was in the industry for some time. I had done a podcast like this and said uh, uh, to one of the guys said, you know, what's your big goal? What's your big goal uh, uh, for this year? And I said, you know, I want to wrestle for the NWA. I think Jordan Clearwater and the Golden Boy, it makes sense. My style just makes sense. It fits with the NWA, right? And so to be able to have that match with Nick, to have that foot in the door, um, for that match to go pretty well and for Nick to be uh, such a great human to be behind the scenes, you know, it set a great uh, stage for me and a great expectation for what was to come at the NWA. And of course, you know, I'm confident in my abilities. Uh, I knew that I would always be a champion at the NWA, uh, but I didn't realize that it would happen in, you know, just under a year and a half. You know, I'm still relatively new to the programming when you think of people like Tim Storm or even a Nick Aldis or, you know, a lot of the people that, that paved the way before me. But, you know, it's been like living a dream. I've never had a bad experience with the NWA. The locker room is, is, is second to none. And uh, Billy Corgan's leadership is is definitely one that's easy to get behind. So, you know, it's it's like living uh, my childhood dream out on television. I, I if it all ended the day, God forbid, I'd be a pretty happy person. Well, that's great to hear. I'm very happy to hear that. And uh, one thing that I hear from Billy Corgan and from other wrestlers when they do various interviews about the NWA, they always talk about the, about the creative freedom. That's something that Billy Corgan talks about. Yes. Some of the wrestlers talk about. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts on that. It's that's something that you have. Uh, enjoy having yourself this is something that you kind of have you noticed that just like how, how's that been for you uh, with the nwa yeah so it's it's something that i've noticed i've been fortunate enough to wrestle for all of the major professional wrestling promotions on the face of the earth except aew because that you know kind of came after the fact you know i've wrestled some matches wwe wrestled some matches impact uh, new japan uwn and in all of those circumstances most of the time um we're given an idea of what we need to say and or do and at the nwa it's no different you know we have an idea of what needs to be done but how we get there is really up to us and i think that's really the unique thing uh that billy corgan has going because for example, when I do a promo, a lot of times I'll get a script almost, you know, hey, and it's no secret. They do that a lot in WWE, you know, hey, say these things, you know, and, uh, you know, I go up to cut my promos for for Corgan and, and I look at Bill and he's like, go. And it's like, great. You know, I can just speak from the heart, you know, and I think, too, Billy's open to different directions that might happen on the program. You know, I feel comfortable enough to say, like, hey, let's try this or, hey, what if we did this? And as a matter of fact, Colin, I think because of the initiative that I took very early on, I ended up in a team with Tyrus and I ended up in the position that I am today. Little things, you know, like I uh, long a uh, while ago at the end of 21, uh, when Tyrus took the NWA World Television Championship off Pope, uh, he was out celebrating. We just started teasing the idea that we could be a team. And I uh, and Tyrus looks at me and said, grab that rose. And I'm like, I'm not going to do that, man. Like, Corgan's going to be so mad just walking out on television with this rose. He's like, do it. So I did it, you know, and to come back and, and he loved it. You know, it ended up being the homepage graphic for a Google for a day. And it was fantastic. You know, I know it's it's some of the most unique things that um, you don't really see often. But that's just an example of what it's like to be with Billy. And uh, he's got such a mind for the business. So I think he knows what would work and potentially what wouldn't work. Just to hone in on that for a second, Billy Corgan, obviously, of the, the Smashing Pumpkins, now he's the president of the NWA as well. Uh, he's running the company, he's taking it to new heights here uh, ever since he acquired it. And now the NWA is gearing up for a big 2023. You guys are going to do a crossover show with AAA. You've got the, the, the enough said pay per view on February 11th. Uh, so just to, to focus on Billy Corgan for a second, uh, what has your experience been like working with him? We were talking about the, the creative freedom. You're just talking about how uh, things kind of naturally evolve some ways with the show, but it's maybe in a more general sense. Uh, what has your experience working with him been like? Sure. I'm not sure if you're a fan of Smashing Pumpkins, you know, a for me growing up, I only listened to Smashing, not only listened to Smashing Pumpkins, but it was a big 
part of what I listened to, you know, they played on the radio all the time. So very familiar with the band. And uh, I have to admit, I kind of fanboyed out a little bit when I met Billy Corgan for the first time. You know, I didn't tell him this. It took me a couple of years to get the courage to say, hey, I love the band. But, you know, I don't want to take away from his mind for the business. You know, it's not lost on me that he's a he's a traveling rock star. You know, he's literally one of the cornerstones of the 90s, I would say, at least, if not making more and, and even better music today. But, you know, Billy has such a mind for the industry. And I've always not had a problem, but I've always taken a step back when I hear people that come from outside of the wrestling business that come in to try to manage a company, uh, right? You know, we've seen a lot of examples of how that hasn't really turned out well for the promotion and the wrestlers. But what makes Billy different is he has the experience in working with TA in the past, but he is a fan of the product. He knows more about professional wrestling than I do. And I consider myself an Uber fan, you know, and I think he really respects and appreciates the tradition of the sport. And so that's why I always have this respect for Billy in the sense that like, yes, he is an accomplished performer, but also, yes, he's an accomplished mind in the professional wrestling business. And now we're seeing again his vision for them that really here kind of the really come to fruition here because he talked about recently where he it took him some time to, to get that up to where he wanted to be, whereas like, you have to make, you know, you have to adjust with things. Obviously, the pandemic, a big thing, but now we're sure. seeing the more of a kind of more focused uh, version of that vision here now ahead of the uh, rolling into the nuts of pay per view. You brought up Tyrus, definitely talk about Tyrus and Idol Mania Sports Management. You guys have a group of champions going there. You, you the, are the top of the champion. You've got Tyrus, the world champion, you've got Scion, the national champion i had the opportunity to talk to black g's the other day so just a group definitely a very very talented group what is your experience been like working with them working with guys like tyrus black g's all those all of you guys like what's that experience been like for you you know they say uh some story arcs work better on television when there's a sense of realism in the back like two guys really might not get along so they might actually you know translate that on television in a professional way i think this is a prime example of that all of us get along so great in the back. We all sit together. We all eat together. We have dinner together. We have breakfast together. We talk shop about professional wrestling in the business. It's, I couldn't ask for a better group of people. You know, Austin Idol, such a wealth of knowledge, man. And, and you know, if they don't know him, then they need to find out. And if they do know, then they know how much of a cornerstone he was, especially in Memphis, right? Um, Black G's, such a great, such a great person too, and, and athletically gifted as hell. Um, same with Scion and, and Tyrus, saved the best for last. He's really been the standout person that took the time when I first came to the NWA and said, hey, I see something in this guy. And Tyrus has gone out of his way time and time again to coach me, to mentor me, and even to go as far as to invite me to his house in New Orleans. You know, we celebrate Mardi Gras together. And I think you get a sense of that camaraderie when you watch us on television. I mean, the best part was hard times three, you know, when Tyrus won the NWA World Heavyweight title, Sign had a little surprise, that bottle of champagne. Nobody knew that was going to happen. Billy probably didn't even know that was going to happen. But, you know, it just kind of adds to the celebration because we're all friends. We're all family, both on camera and behind the scenes. So it's it's such a blast. I couldn't have been asked to be paired with a better group. I mean, it's always great. It's great to have that camaraderie, especially as you mentioned behind the scenes. I was talking to Black Cheese and he was saying that on paper, you guys, it's it's very maybe not a hodgepodge group, but you, you're you the golden sure. boy. You've got Tyrus, you know, the big powerhouse. You've got Sion, the masked man, Black G's, Austin. Like, on paper, it doesn't make sense, quote unquote, but it works. What, to you, why Why is that the case? Why, what makes it kind of uh, a cohesive unit, despite having maybe some seemingly uh, d disparate parts? You know, I think that's the million dollar question. Uh, Aaron Stevens said the same to me. I started, uh, when I met Aaron Stevens in, in Hollywood, I was writing to the show. I was writing to the UWN show with a with a group of guys. And on paper, you would be, how do these guys have anything in common, right? You know, they're all from different walks of life, all from different backgrounds, and yet we're we find each other. You know, and I think that's that's the same here. We all have. Uh, differences in our opinions, and we're all kind of opposite in a sense, but opposites attract, right? It's the yin and the yang behind everything. And I couldn't agree more, you know, on paper, sure, you could say hodgepodge, you know, you might not think all of us belong together, but when you watch us on camera, it's very apparent, I think, that, 
hey, these guys, they get along, they, they complement each other's strengths, you know, and uh, we learn a lot from each other. And I think that's the thing that helps us grow is that, you know, we're never, we're never stale. We're always looking for competition, whether it's in the group or out of the group, you know, and so we bring a lot of those commonalities and love professional wrestling together and our heel antics too, you know, that, that ties us together a little bit as well. <laughs> You mentioned the competition. I do want to talk about the, the nuts and pay-per-view, but just in a more general sense, you're you're continuing to take, you know, make progress in various ways. You got the title now, you're featured with the uh, Idol Man Sports Management. So you know, it's only January, so it's like 2023 could be a big year for you. Uh and everybody's got a very talented roster. Is there anybody that you really stands out to you that someone that you want to face? If it's an NWA elsewhere, just you know, any kind of uh, everyone always has a list, quote unquote, or many, many people do, but even outside of a list necessarily, the people that kind of come to mind of like, oh, I really want to face that person. Yeah, I think in the NWA, there's one person that really comes top of mind, and that's Chris Masters or Chris Adonis. I think Chris and I, when we stand across from the ring uh, from each other, we tell a, a story of, of, you know, an experienced veteran. And a, and a hungry up and comer, right? That has some experience, but we're almost carbon copies of each other in that way. Granted, I will give to Chris his body when he was 21 on Monday Night Raw. That's, you know, that's almost untouchable. But, you know, I think you see a lot of the parallels between Chris and I. And Chris and I had a match at uh, UWN for the uh, heavyweight title. And our chemistry was just undeniable in there. And the pacing that he has and the things that he could also teach me as an opponent. I think uh, I think that would make the most sense. I think there's a lot of fun stuff we could get out of that storyline as well. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, more than just matches. You know, on screen entertainment that I'd love to work with Chris. I think he's a very funny guy, and I'm the and I'm the type of person to pull that out of anybody. So, you know, I think that would be a great storyline to have at the NWA. Man, if you opened that question up to anybody, though, that that uh, we might need another thirty minutes on the Zoom because, <laughs> like you said, everybody has their golden list, right? But you know, I'm gonna stick with Chris Adonis right now. I think he's one person I would really like to feud with in the NWA. And I'll also put Aaron uh, on that list as well as Tyrus. I've wrestled Tyrus, but I think there could be a great story to tell with Tyrus and I, as well as with Aaron and I. We have to build on that a little bit more for the people that don't know. But I think the that the foundation is there. All of those sound very exciting. I hope we get to see those matches, especially, I mean, I, any of them sound like uh, you said this. You got the story with Tyrus. You have the, the natural story there. Chris Masters, Aaron Stevens. I mean, all of them sound like they could be very, very entertaining. Something else going to be very entertaining is enough said pay per view on February 11th. Uh, no, I don't think they've officially announced your match for the show yet. Right, was, yeah, because I, I know they're going to have the Champion Series finals at NWA Power, but the, the card right. is still in progress for Nuff Said on February 11th. In a more general sense, at least, uh, are you, how, how, what are your thoughts on Nuff Said, uh, at, least, at least at this stage, kind of looking at the pay-per-view in, in a more general sense? Right. I think uh, Nuff Said is going to be a good moment for everybody to set the, the set the stage for what to expect from 2023. I mean, you said it best, Colin. Uh, you know, I positioned myself in, in a way that, you know, I'm looking to have a great 2023 heading in as, as new world television champion. Who knows what I'll head out with. But, you know, I think Nuff Said, and, and you're right, they haven't really announced a match for me yet, but based on the matches that they have announced, I think we're going to start building this foundation of what to expect over the next 12 months. And that's because NWA is very story and character driven. And we're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna have these big one-off pay-per-views where you're gonna have a lot of dream matches. I think we're gonna be telling a story for several months. And Nuff said it's just the beginning of this long story arc that we might see come to the fruition towards the end of this year. But we'll have to tune in and see, you know, uh, Tyrus and Matt Cardona uh, is the uh, scheduled main event. And two, one thing that's fantastic about Enough Says, it's sold out already. So that's great news for the NWA that our first pay-per-view of the year, we sold out, you know, almost a month before the actual show. So kudos to everybody. The show is sold out. So if you're not, if you don't have a ticket yet, you have to buy it on Fight. And to me, the paper is interesting because... Uh, you know, if you watch the show every week, if you're, you're familiar with the product, you're familiar with the roster, but you have probably a, a number of fans who maybe just to, happen to say, oh, I'm going to check it out. I'm going to see. So maybe they're not necessarily as familiar with, with, with the Jordan Clearwater, with a, whoever it might be. For those fans who may not be as familiar with uh, with you and, and your work at this point, uh, are there any matches that come to mind uh, for you of your time in NWA or just in general that you really kind of that you would say this represents me as a wrestler this is kind of like a, a showcase to me like a, just a couple matches that kind of come to, come to mind in that regard yeah so i would say one of my most recent matches with uh, aj kazana is a perfect example of what to expect out of the golden boy you know a very old school 
hard hitting story based drama. And that's something that I really love to sink my teeth into. You know, we have moments, we have hard hitting action, but we tell a story, whether it's on a body part or it's on a, over a title or over a, a, a grand feud, you know, that's one of those things that I can look back at and say, yeah, that's a, that's a through and through. That's a Jordan Clearwater match. Also, I would say, um, my match with Joe Alonzo, who was recently signed by the NWA, that's a, another great example. It's one of those matches that I keep in my memory bank because of, uh, of how aggressive and how intense that match was, but also blending some of the independent style and doing a little bit more flashier moves that I can adapt to that as well as that old school, you know, hard hitting drama. And then the two, the other thing with Joe Alonzo is being able to have made somebody that's brand new to the NWA because by the end of that match, the crowd was on their feet for Joe and they hated me. So I consider that a job well done. And finally, I have to, I have to mention my uh, fatal four way. This was a while ago with Sal um, Colby and uh, Plunkett, all great guys. I love them all in the back. Plunkett and I great friends, Colby and I, he's my NWA best friend. He knows that well. Now he's, you know, moving on to some other things, but he'll always be my NWA best friend. And then Sal is just such a character. So that match too, that was a lot of fun, a lot of ins, a lot of outs, and, and a lot of uh, uh, of good guy Jordan. <laughs> if, if you haven't seen me, Matt, definitely, definitely recommend all those matches here. So one last time, Jordan, why should fans tune into NWA you now set up every level? What's kind of the, 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 for you, like what's the big draw of that show? Uh, even maybe for uh, the full card, yeah, just like, yeah, one, one last sales pitch for the show. Sure, sure. It's our value prop. I think our value prop is the NWA is that we meld all styles. We're middle of the road. Billy Corgan said it best. You know, WWE is doing their thing. AEW is doing their thing. New Japan's doing their thing. And we encapsulate all of that. You know, I think it's, it's, it's said too much. But the credit isn't really given to the NWA for being one of the true leaders in the Forbidden Door. I mean, think about In Power. We had all of these people from AEW. Me personally, the NWA picked me up while I was on New Japan Strong. You know, we have other New Japan Strong uh, characters on NWA as well. People that have worked at WWE, people that, you know, are in ROH or have been at ROH. So you get the blend of all of those styles under one roof. And also you get to have all those guys put into storylines that you're going to care about people that you're going to want to tune in. You're going to watch enough said, and you're going to say, I can't wait for the next pay-per-view. When is that? That's the big thing. Cause you want to see how this thing unfolds. You know, we'll probably leave you with a good cliffhanger. Maybe, maybe not, but something for you to tune back into for sure. That's our value prop as the NWA. Yeah, have it, folks. Definitely going to ha going to have a very interesting show. Uh, NWA enough said on February 11th. Before that, we got the live episode of power on January 31st. Jordan, and thank you so much for your time. Lastly, if you want to plug your socials or anything where people can find you, uh, Twitter and Excel and all that good stuff. Sure thing. I made it easy. Uh, it's at Clear Like Water One on all social media platforms. A lot of people ask me why it's not Golden Boy. Oscar De, Ho De La Hoya, I think he's got that one under wraps, unfortunately. Um, and then uh, how to do a funny pun, uh, pun on Clearwater, you know. So I'm, I'm going to get a water sponsorship here sooner rather than later. I was joking about that with a couple other guys. It only makes sense, right? You know, you could see it in the Super Bowl commercial. Just a big old crystal geyser and then a professional wrestler pops out of the ocean. But no, uh, Clear Like Water on all social media platforms. And uh, uh, thank you so much for supporting the podcast and for following me in the future. Perfect. Jordan, thank you so much. I wish you the very best of luck with Andy Boy. Uh, enough said and everything else moving forward. And uh, here's to a great 2023. Here's to it. Thank you so much. Thank you.